So oh, are you in this okay. right now? No. Okay. You're commuting? I, I mean, uh, I, I go sporadically at this point. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Tom, yes. Chair, You're just board. missing a Kara. Chair, board, uh, Brittany. Yes. yes. Um, just as a, a resource for the, the change in the board members, if anyone has any questions that they need assistance with, um, I'm on the website, all my information is there, phone number and email. So whatever- Barbara Pulse is the only one that didn't get any changes actually. <laughs> well, it's true, but we do have some new faces and I haven't introduced myself. So I'm here, but um, just letting you know that you know we're here to help you if you need any assistance with any information at all. Brittany is uh, the, the key person here that uh, steers the ship and, and guides you guys through the municipality. And then with the building department, I'm also here. If you have any questions, whatever it may be from tidal, um, tidal planes, uh, flood zones, whichever you may need, just you know, lean on me for anything. Thank you. Thank you, we appreciate, we appreciate okay, the support. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no then I'll the be like- Work session? And my legs won't reach. I saw a second, all in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Opening a work session. This is the uh, December 13, 2022 uh, work session of the Harbor and Coastal Zone Management Commission. Uh, no one is here in person, so uh, I suppose it's superfluous to tell you where the exits are. And if you're watching uh, on, uh, on LMC TV at home, thank you for your interest in those affairs. Um, we, as a work session, we're uh, just weighing in on the completeness of applications so that the applicants can be guided and, and make our, uh, our meeting next Wednesday as efficient as possible. We have two returning applicants and one new applicant for the, for, uh, the coming week. So let's take up first 921 Soundview Drive. This is a single family residence. Uh, we've seen them several times and uh, there are, there's very little new in the application. When we spoke to them last time, um, they had changed the location of the pool that had attracted a lot of attention. It is now at grade level. Um, we discussed the possibility of telling them that we no longer needed a, uh, a site visit because uh, the pool was largely causing the need for the site visit and that's been changed. Uh, are we still all of you, we don't need a site visit? Yes. yes. Okay, we're all of you, we don't need a site visit. Um, I've looked at this application a lot now. Um, I am pretty confident that we that I don't need any additional material to cast my vote. I think the application is complete uh, and I expect to vote it. Uh, does anybody have anything else they think they need from 921 sound here? No, not necessary. Okay, I, I think that one is complete. They'll come in and uh, I expect they will get their consistency vote. Um, 1310 Flagler Drive. This is um, uh, a coastal property. Uh, we're moving a basketball court and creating a, a lar much larger area of pervious surface than is present in the present condition. Um, they've, uh, they're built to storm codes and have breakaway walls on the first floor. We looked at this at some length as a preliminary at our last meeting. Uh, they've submitted several uh, additional. Uh, they've submitted several additional reports, including a bunch of um, of uh, analyses in plan form. Much of it floodplain related, or some of it floodplain related. Um, work session, yes, ma'am. Um, so I took a look through their new submissions. Uh, we are still looking for um, we're still looking for a complete set of reports from uh, Kelly Sessions and from AKRF. Um, I because I don't think we have complete memos on it. Uh, I also have looked through their um, their stormwater their uh, I'm sorry their pervy their uh, floodplain volume analysis and I'm gonna need them to walk me through it at the meeting, but I'm not sure I need anything else on it. I just think that I need them to walk me through it and make sure I, I fully understand it. 
Has anybody else uh, had a chance to take a look at that? And uh, I didn't. Did they tuck opinion? that pool in? Did they tuck the Did pool they in? Uh, the yes, the they, they, they've got new schematics that change the position of the pool. Uh, can't say I took a real close look at it. No, but I, I, I just I noted they had made that change. Thank you. Um, so we expected that that's in there. Um, there's not a lot of uh, the SWIP has been updated. There's not a lot of other written material, but there are some some new site plans. Um, I'm going to need them to walk through it, but I, I don't spot anything missing. There's nothing that I'm sure I need other than from our consultants. Uh, Teresa, I wanted to check with you um, and see uh, when we can expect AKRF to have us uh, complete on this one. Uh, and uh, John Keller, I'm, I'm of course going to want to know if they are, uh, if, if you agree with what they have said in their SWIP. I uh, had no comments because I thought that the application was relatively complete, but if you would like me to put that in writing, I can send you that by Friday. Uh, that's very useful. Thanks. Okay. I just wasn't um, sure if that was something that was typically needed when I had no uh, comments or questions. Uh, so I will put that in official writing. It's useful just to complete the file, but I understand the information and I appreciate that. Um, and uh, and of course, I, I do appreciate consultant support on on SWIP issues, which um, you know compliance with the manual is is technical, and I, I like the the consultant help that we get on that. Okay. So that was for John. I just want to make sure that yeah, that compliance on the SWIP everywhere. The the applicant addressed the, uh, I would say all, all our comments, but one issue. Um, they did a nice job designing the project. Uh, I don't have a real any real issues with it. The uh, the actual discharge from the property is being reduced by about thirty three percent, and it's primarily due to the reduction in impervious surface. The only comment I had, which wasn't addressed, was I felt that the the hydraulic soil group that they used for an existing lawn condition, they used a D soil where I, based on their percolation test, I suggested that they, they re-examine it. And it was more probably more appropriate to use an A soil, which would be more infiltration from, from the lawn areas under existing conditions. Um, I don't think it's gonna, it's gonna change things i still think they're going to comply but they, the the report just hasn't addressed the the soil group issue okay i mean you know d d is like the worst class right and, and a is an upgrade it's significantly more more uh absorbent correct so when you pave over an a soil you get a, a larger increase in runoff than when you pave over a d soil wow. i got it okay mm. they, may, they may have more runoff if they looked at it under an A condition, but because they they are they have such a significant reduction, they're probably still going to comply. They just may want to update the report to reflect the the true conditions out there. Okay, that's very useful. Okay, so that's an open item um, for thirteen ten Flagler, and uh, if if I know anything about. Uh, Cuddy and Feder, I know that they are listening, and uh, we'll we'll take that cue. Um, okay, so we know what we need to do for thirteen ten. Anybody else on thirteen ten? Um, I just want to say, providing that everything else is exactly the same as the ones we reviewed last time, because I, I looked at the at the folder and I spotted the difference. They brought the swimming pool closer. They used space. They put some more trees and shrubs and. They change something in there. Um, I haven't checked everything else from that we reviewed the previous times. So providing that everything is equal and the same, then nothing else. I mean, I think this is this covers. Okay, okay. we're uh, we're approaching a complete file on thirteen ten Flagler. That's good news. Okay, so those are our two prior applicants. We have a new applicant on this one for marine structure. So this I'm I'm going to take a minute to go through this because we we do these occasionally but not very often and uh, applicants and the folks watching at home may not always um, may not always follow how we do this. And it's sometimes nice to ground ourselves in what the rules are. So first of all, we have, we, we have a public hearing requirement for marine structures 
And I, I think Brittany wanted to make sure that we're, uh, that we all understand what the notice requirement is so that we, uh, we and the applicant can make all their uh, obligations. They, it can't be done, it's a 15 day requirement and it can't get done in time for uh, a vote, a public hearing and vote on our uh, December meeting calendar, uh, but it should be able to make January. Uh, Brittany? Yeah, uh, Robert, I just wanted to double check that. Uh, I believe it's 15 days notice. Um, the radius, I don't have it in front of me, but I did print the code. So I just want to be sure I get all that right since I haven't done it yet. Um, and it looks like signage and all the normal stuff we do for all the other boards. Um, but if you could just kind of guide me a little bit on that in the coming days so I can send that out to the applicant and get them, give them enough time to prepare for that meeting. Happy to have an offline conversation with you tomorrow about that. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, we, um, when we consider a marine structure, most, most things come to us for consistency. And when we do consistency, uh, we are asked usually by planning to advise on consistency. Um, we are not actually the permitting authority. However, for marine structures, we are the permitting authority. Under 240-23 uh, of the code, the application comes to us and we consider it. So. We should, um, after a public hearing, deny a marine structure. And there are a few things that don't, that don't have permit requirements. For example, in-kind, in-place replacements. Um, but most marine structures above a certain size are, are gonna need a permit from us. We should deny it if um, the methods of construction are unsuitable in their materials or methods or design and can be reasonably expected to result in a marine structure that may fail to accomplish its uh, stated or intended purpose or present safety hazard to any person. We should deny it if uh, the marine structure is inappropriate due to size, design, or material and will result in a marine structure that is ill-suited or ill-adapted to its stated or intended purpose, or if it's uh, reasonably anticipated that it will conflict with another uh, marine structure or land-based use. And we should deny it if it conflicts with our harbor management plan. I'll circle back to that in a minute. And we should deny it if it is an actual or potential hazard to navigation. Those, those are the four conditions under which we should not grant a marine structure permit. One of those that um, is sort of elastic and includes a lot of other stuff is, we talk a lot about our uh, local waterfront revitalization plan here because at almost every applicant, we go through our policies and talk about which LWR policy, LWRP policies uh, are and are not implicated. We also have a harbor management plan that we don't talk about nearly as much, but it, it also has a set of structures. And if you're watching at home, you can go to the website, and search for the harbor management plan, and it's in there. And that has policies. This one probably implicates, and the commissioners are, are welcome to you know, have their own opinion about which ones are implicated, but it probably implicates policy one which is that we preserve, we view the harbor as an asset and we preserve uh, the asset and its appearance. Uh, two, uh, concerns safe navigation, mooring and storage. Uh, policy five, we protect the harbor from pollution. Uh, policy six, we ensure sound construction and mooring placement and policy eight, that we promote recreational and economic use of the harbor. Um, a lot, so a lot of that involves making sure that the um, materials and the design are appropriate for the purpose and to avoid any danger. Um, speaking for myself, uh, this is the sort of issue on which um, I like to apply common sense, but also get consultant assistance. So, um, these are the things that I know I need to know about uh, the proposed dock at 561 Long Terrace. I want to talk about the height of the pilings because when we have looked at uh, harbor structures before, the general size and scale uh, presents a view shed issue. Uh, I've taken the position before that, it, that the view shed policy under the LWRP encompasses the look of the harbor, even from the water. Um, some council appearing before us have disagreed with that. However, our harbor management plan makes that express in policy one. Um, if 
so I want to think about the height of the, uh, which are not marked on the plans that were submitted. I want to think about the height of the pilings, whether that's necessary and whether they're consistent with uh, the height of surrounded pilings, such that they're consistent with the look we have now, or whether they would represent a change to the aesthetic. Um, I want to, uh, I want the harbor master view of the siting design and materials to make sure that uh, it can be expected to accomplish its stated purpose and not present a safety hazard to anybody. Uh, and I think we should talk about navigation, though it's not apparent to me that the siting caused any navigation problems. It's out of the channel, it's out of the, uh, and they have had to pass scrutiny with uh, Army Corps of Engineers and the state already which I believe look for that. We will checklist with them the, the permits that they need to uh, have, but they've got several attached to their uh, submission. Uh, I am, but I am, I am fairly confident that I want the Harbor Master to weigh in on siting and materials at least. Uh, Thomas, does that mean he attends the meeting or do I just send the application over to him for review and comments? Uh, attendance for live questions would be ideal. If, okay. for reason, if for some reason we can't get that done, written comments, would, you know, we could we could work with. Uh, okay. It would be ideal. We don't permit on marine uh, structures all the time. I, I, I hope it's not bigger than that. Yeah, it's fine. Here in person. It would, it would be useful to our process. Okay. Um, okay, so that's what I know I need to think about. The, the size and scale, making sure that it's not out of line. And the only thing I can tell you that I think I'm worried about there is height. Know, it looks like they don't mark the height, but it looks right. like it's an awfully long way off the water at low tide. That's it. Um, and uh, citing for navigation, though, since they got Army Corps and state, um, I think that it's unlikely that's a problem. Um, but uh, for safety purposes, citing the materials, making sure that it's that it's appropriate and won't you know won't rot, fall apart, and be a hazard in ten years' time. Uh, that's what I think I need to know. Uh, others. Uh, one observation for me: I, I was looking at this one, and uh, I couldn't find. I mean, I was expecting it a little bit more substantial for for the impact this one might have. Uh, what do I mean by that? Um, when it comes, you know, to drawings, when it comes to, like you said, you know, the material being used, when it comes to um, the qualification a, a contractor must have or licenses or any prior experience, this should be uh, highlighted in that, in that um, application, in my view. So uh, just to give you an example, uh, the survey that is submitted with it, it's a year old. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's out, out of date. I don't think it is, but these things are kind of, time critical and based on what we had with Ida and all the changes beyond that point, maybe need some updating. This one or, um, anyway, that's, that, that's my observation. In terms of um, points that I'd like to, to make, uh, I couldn't understand what the impact was gonna be. Uh, yes, in the navigation towards that area, but also to the neighboring properties. Um, I was looking at the at the images from you know Google Map and all this kind of yeah, stuff, and I know the area, so you can see that there are a lot of pontoons and floating uh, platforms in the area, and uh, I couldn't figure out how this one is going to interact, how it's going to be with the rest of the of the, of the stuff. This is something maybe they need to. You said that much better than I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was like I was like, are they going to hit each other on the docks because they seem to be awfully close? That's it's all. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it, it's a it's a busy piece of waterway, and everybody there seems to have a dock. And uh, I I saw in the plans the immediately adjacent properties dock. Um, they're sort of close. Uh, so we're going to want to talk to the applicant and the harbor master about that to yep. make sure, and that's sort of that's that navigation hazard thing. Are these boats mm -hmm. going to be able to to get in and out past each other uh, without causing problems? So that's that's the concern that the applicant should be aware of, and uh, that we're going to want the harbor master's guidance for and during construction and afterwards. Yeah, I mean, obviously during construction, and 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 I think timing is also very important in that. Um, I guess it's something that is going to take a few days to to be to be built or being transported to that place. So timing time is also. 
Okay, so I think that's what we think we need to know for 561 Lawn Terrace. Um, and hopefully the applicants are, uh, are uh, watching and have that guidance. Uh, we will see them next Wednesday and uh, hopefully move the ball forward uh, in view, in a, with a view to getting a public hearing done on the, um, on the January scheduled meeting. Uh, now I hadn't planned on doing the, uh, I hadn't planned on doing the letter from the state because it came in uh, when, well, what we can since work sessions are a good time to do administrative stuff. Does, does somebody have it? Okay. In this one, the Ben Stafford one? Yes. Yeah, yeah, you need it? Yeah. Thank you very much. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I can give it, this is not strictly on our agenda, but it's, it's useful to the public. We had previously uh, provided guidance to the trustees. Um, request for a permit from the state to dredge in the in the rivers. The state, of course, the trustees determine consistency, we just advise. Uh, and then the uh, Department of State does their own consistency review. Uh, we have a, a letter from the Department of State to the village's consultants. And they took up the, they brought to the village a bunch of, of their questions about the dredging. Uh, among other things, it says, uh, please provide, uh, quote, much more detailed and robust statement of the purpose of and need for the activity. Um, they ask, uh, how have you determined this dredging would affect floodwater levels and the risk to the adjacent community? They want flow calculations and, and model results. Uh, the state asks for more information about how these particular locations were determined to be the most beneficial. Um, and that it won't cause uh, measurable erosion or flooding increases at other sites. Uh, the state has asked, um, this area is very dynamic. It's got parking lots, bridges, homes, ball skates, et cetera, right on the waterway. Elaborate on how the dredging will affect uh, all of those different infrastructure types. Uh, the state has asked uh, that the village provide a cross-section of uh, drawings of each dredging location with dimensions um, proposed sediment depths, water, uh, water elevation lines, et cetera. Uh, they want bathymetric and uh, current conditions in the, uh, uh, sorry, bathymetry of the current conditions at proposed dredging areas and detailed calculations of the, of the dredge volume quantity. The state has asked for uh, more information about the stockpile locations, which was an issue that we advised on, uh, including but not limited to the dimensions, total quantity of settlement, sediment they can hold, distance to waterways, and how the spoil will be dewatered. The state has asked for um, uh, the identification of the owners of all the properties on which the activities will be uh, conducted and the abutting property owners, both upland and underwater. Uh, and uh, they asked about the Army Corps of Engineers plans uh, from 2016 that hopefully we're moving ahead with. Um, they've asked the, the village, please advise the state how the proposal will impact the flood control measures proposed in the Army Corps of Engineers plans. Uh, they've identified LWR policies 13, 14, 15, 35, and 44 uh, as affected by the proposals. Uh, and in essence, they're, uh, they're asking for a, a substantially um, more complete and developed proposal before they sign off on the, on the permit. Uh, we will uh, we'll try to keep the public updated on this. This is, uh, once again, not our vote. It doesn't strictly, it doesn't come before us for consistency to review. The state and the board of trustees do that. But we advise the trustees, and uh, if they need anything else from us in the areas, we'll um, we'll do whatever we can to advise them further. All right, that was all the agenda items I have. Any other visitor? No. Motion to adjourn. Adjourn. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. We are adjourned. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Business. Good job. We had three seconds. <laughs> well, you know, here now you only had to work, stay an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, these things balance out.
So nice. I'll be attending your meetings, helping with any consistency reviews if that's what you need. Yeah. Terrific. That was for Sharon. Hey, so well, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So does that mean that we have a, a an attorney and a deputy? Um yes, Bob Scolino is the attorney and I'm I just started a deputy attorney for both the same firm. And so you guys are contractors. I'll give you my card if anybody. Yeah, please. Terrific. <laughs> of, uh, so you guys are contractors with the village? Yes. Yeah. Um, a lot cool. of them is able to get the instrument. Yeah. Here I am. Very good. Yeah. I actually Wait, went to the yeah. wrong. Um, I went down to the wrong. I got down there. That's so why I busted in the <laughs> There's a little bit of a learning curve with procedures here. We um, We started... A couple of years ago, when we were very badly backlogged with administrative items, we started holding work sessions the Tuesday before our the following Wednesday meeting to clear stuff off. Uh, we started deciding that we don't need to do those every time, but it was easy during the pandemic because we were all in Zoom. So we could hop on for 20 minutes. That's become cool. a little more burdensome now that we have to show up in person. Yes. Um, yeah. And okay. we've kind of That's got the administrative well. stuff. That way, no matter where I go, I always do it. It's, it's so smart. Dial I'm sorry. I, you never I know kind of do it. Like, I'm sitting here thinking yeah. it's yeah. a charger. Yeah. No, it's on the spot. Yeah, they're good. Apple, Apple, you remember those? No, the young Apple. I love that you think I'm too young for something. That's awesome. Very so. What were you saying? Like paper or something? Because I do remember people are saying, value. All the doctors. And talk about what you think they might I that's remember you would use different seven. letters to come up with a word, yeah, you had to have your people. Yeah. They came out right before Black Fridays. I remember. Well, the papers, you know, but uh, they can do a lot more public yeah. like, you know, yeah. you know, I don't think I was at the tail end of it, but I, I do remember that. Um, but no, what I have found is when I go places and I think I'll be able to link up to whatever they have for Wi-Fi, it doesn't always work. No, but it's so smart because it's automatic. And I get it through work. It's already linked up to my thing, so it automatically hits every time I go somewhere. Yeah. He's doing a meeting. Right. No, that's what I do. Like, so if I get stuck in traffic, whatever I do, if I have my laptop and my thing, I just have to keep it charged. That's the only thing because I can't plug it into my... Um, Bar. Right, Apple you got I have a regular, yeah, yeah, I don't know if I can find, I don't think it's strong enough, like the, the cable to charge this. Um, um, or, uh, but basically, anywhere meeting, I go, I take it. The only place it has not worked, stuff. and I swear this is a conspiracy, is I went on a cruise ship and I brought it with me because I didn't want to pay for that. Extra. Oh, no, no, that's a cruise, that's a conspiracy. Yes. I had a I could, I was like, you know experience what? on the one cruise I'm still going to be able to do it. I was so convinced. I'm like, even if it's just in port, I'll be able to use this. No, no. <laughs> it was like a 10 day cruise too. Oh, yeah. it was no, a they, they, I had to go they, by they, internet. They, yeah. Sorry to interrupt everybody. I'm going to sign off because I have to end this webinar, but you guys can leave everything, your name plates. I'll pick them up in the morning. Thanks, thank Brittany. You, All right. Thank you. Have a good night. Tomorrow, you too. Bye. Yeah. See you tomorrow, Jack. <laughs> sure.